Hello, welcome everyone. I see people are starting to come in. So we're gonna give this about 20 seconds and wait for everyone to pile in. I see a lot of familiar names here. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to get started here in just a few seconds while we wait for people to kind of pile in, okay? All right, so um, people are still kind of coming into the room, but we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us today. Welcome to our webinar, Increasing Workforce Readiness with the Integration of Entry-Level Certification. This webinar is hosted by Florida Literacy Coalition and made possible through the support of the Florida Department of Education, Division of Career and Adult Education. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to turn your attention to the controls you have at the bottom of your screen. So uh, please take a moment to click, click on the chat icon. So um, on that chat box, you'll see a drop down that says to all panelists, Please click that drop down and go ahead and set that to all panelists and attendees. That way you can chat with everyone in this session. So please use the chat box to share resources and talk to one another. You can also enter your technical questions into the chat box to move privately. Uh, if you have any content related questions, please enter it into the Q&A. The presenter will be answering them out loud. So with that, I would like to introduce you to our presenter today, Harold Gertner. Harold has worked with the education program at Santa Fe College in a variety of teaching and administrative roles since 2013. His current role is as a group uh, placement and learning specialist. Um, he's also done some um, sessions for us at our Florida Leaders Conference and others throughout the state. So with that, I will go over, I will go ahead and pass it over to him. Harold. Great. Well, thank you very much, Nicole. And um Welcome everyone, thanks for having me. The um, title of the presentation today is Workforce Preparation, and uh, we're gonna be focusing on digital literacy, critical thinking, and um, entry-level certifications. And um, anyone that has uh, seen me in the past, these are building on some similar topics that we've been working with at Santa Fe and discussing at some um, conferences in past years, but. Hopefully there'll be something new for those of you that have tuned in before as well. We're always trying to add and do something new, build on what we've done in the past. So with that, let's get going. Yeah, so like Nicole said, I'm um, from the adult education program at Santa Fe College in Gainesville, Florida. And um, you will be um, provided with a link to this PowerPoint. And so there are some live links in it that you can use later if you would like. And here's a link to our webpage, just if you're curious. Um, like many of you and like many people in adult education, I have a very wide um, and kind of eclectic educational background. Most recently, I finished a, a program here at the University of Florida in uh, educational technology. And um, even before beginning that program, I was very interested in pushing uh, digital literacy and online learning and extending our um, teaching to online world to help meet adult education students um, where they are in terms of their schedules and also help prepare them for where they need to be for competing and being successful in an increasingly online and digital world. And uh, I think um, our current pandemic and shutdown situation, no matter um, where you are in the uh, in, in, in things, depending on where you are in Florida you, or what kind of institution you are at, you may still be teaching uh, remotely or um, you may be back in face to face at some capacity. Um, you may have different resources. And so we're going to try and speak to a bunch of those different settings and bridge some of those situations today. And um, the main goal here is, is I'd like to encourage all of you to, to kind of embrace your inner lifelong learner. And um, I'm stealing a little phrase from a lot of modern or current educational theory. And, and I'm gonna encourage you to move from being the kind of learned lecturer where you have all the control and confidence of distilling your knowledge upon your students and more to a facilitator where you can help them learn to navigate the world and learn to uh, learn to learn, learn by watching you learn maybe in some cases. 
because we're not all experts in um, the digital realm, but we need to help our students learn <clears throat> to be, or at least gain the confidence to, um, to continue to learn themselves and challenge themselves when they hit a roadblock. So before I move on, I just wanna say thanks again to the um, Florida Literacy Coalition and the Department of Education for sponsoring this webinar and the ongoing events through the Florida Literacy Coalition. They've got lots of great stuff going on. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and turn off my video. That was the mic, sorry. Don't wanna mute myself. Just so it's a little uh, less distracting and we can just focus on the shared screen for the rest of the time. So, um, what are we talking about? Building digital literacy into your program. So um, part of this uh, is encouraging everyone to um, make digital literacy a regular and ongoing part of all your activities, not simply um, something you do separate as a computer class or something. Um, but I'm gonna hopefully offer you some, some suggestions as to how you can build your own confidence and skills while also preparing your students for, um, with, for these skills. Now, regardless of uh, how important it is in our um, everyday world and how much of the world has gone online now, and although that seems you know, important to us and moves the, pushes the reason as to why we should be teaching this, I guess, or forces the reason as to why we should be teaching this, this is part of our, our digital, our, our uh, curriculum frameworks for um, anybody that's involved directly with adult education and get some of those grants for the ABE or GED instruction. Um, there's digital literacy rolled into those that touches on much of what I'm gonna talk about today. But what are we talking about? Well, if you're in a college-based program, I suggest you start utilizing your college's learning management system or LMS. Um, for Santa Fe and many other college-based programs, this is going to be Canvas. Um, this is something that, uh, although we had a few teachers that used it and discussed um, and discussed uh, ways to push it into the wider wider use throughout the department, um, we really weren't forced into using it for all our classes as a place to house our learning materials and for our students to turn in material and all of that until um, this pandemic shut down back in March. And we've, we've been online since then at Santa Fe, except for very small select programs. Um, and we'll take a look here in just a minute at what Canvas looks like and talk about some of the features. Um, but if you don't have access to that because you're not at a college-based program where um, the college system is paying for that service, there is a, a variety of programs through Google's, through Google's um, Suites, a suite of applications that um, can basically mirror the, the same sort of resources. And you can, you can build a similar platform for your students to work through. Um, now, I would argue this is important, um, not only so that your students can keep learning uh, in a, if they're remote to your program right now, or if they're face-to-face -face and then another, uh, for some other reason of shutdown or some something they have to go remote again but also that if any of your students continue on into a college um, setting they're going to access their classes this way and um, even beyond that many workforce environments um, use some sort of management system online management platform similar to these learning management systems to um, manage staff communications um, uh, you know, scheduling and um, uh, I mean, from a variety of in industries, even down to industries you might not think of. Um, I, I have some friends uh, that work at a, a music venue and all the information about um, scheduling and who works what shift and what time to be there and what time bands arrive and what specials are, all that comes through a management system um, through their phone. Um, I also work with a community radio station here and we have a similar system called Basecamp that we use for all our um, project management stuff. And it works very similarly to these learning, um, online learning management systems. So this will help their, your students succeed in later academic and work um, life. Also, you can teach some of these specific skills in terms of a specific software program 
um, while also having your students learn um, the more academic, traditional academic skills. For example, using Microsoft Word um, as a word processing program, it automatically will flag grammar problems. And as your students are typing along and have grammar problems, while you correct them, uh, you teach them how to correct them, you know, right click on the grammar problem, the underlined in blue or purple, and it'll pop up and give you some suggestions as to what the issue is. But it'll also explain what the issue is. And if you're working hand in hand with your students, you can sit there and make sure they understand why this is uh, changing, wanting to change their writing or add a period or take away a space or whatever it is, and make sure they're, so they're eventually learning the grammar while they're doing the process of typing an essay or a paragraph. And um, over time, they'll get less and less of the underlined blue and purple because they'll have learned to avoid it because they'll have seen it, they've corrected it so many times. Same happens with spelling. Now in those programs, some of the spelling, um, small words, they, they fix rather quickly, common mistakes, kind of auto fix, right? But other words, you do have to slow down and stop and think about it and then choose from a list of options which word you were actually trying to get at. And if, if you can encourage your students to slow down and pay attention, they can actually learn to spell those words over time that way. Um, similarly, learning a spreadsheet program like Excel, you're learning critical thinking skills about how tables and charts and graphs work, but you can also be reinforcing math skills and then also teaching them how to use a program so that they don't have to uh, add two plus two plus two plus two plus two down a uh, column. They can just sum the column. So learn to learn the initial skill, but also learn the tool to make the skill faster when working in a much larger business world environment and kind of prep them for some of what they may see. So let's take a look real quickly at what some of that looks like. So if you um, are in a college-based system, you might have access to um, Canvas, which is a, an LMS or learning management system. And um, here's an example of my Canvas dashboard. And you can see some of the classes I'm teaching at the moment. And if you click on any of these classes, it opens up to a page that looks somewhat like this. There's a lot of ways to make this more complex, but um, I like to build my classes for um, ease of use for our students in just a very top-down format where you start at the top and you just work through the material. And there's, for the way I've done it, there's a module per week. And it's very simple to add to, to build to, um, you want to add to something, you just add a, you just click the plus and it asks what you want to add. And you say, I want to add a new, new assignment. They add item and it pops up and then you can open this and add content into this assignment. There's also quizzes and all sorts of things you can work with. Um, it brings you a content box and then you can have people submit online. There's various ways to submit either a text box or they can submit a web address if you're asking them to search for something, file uploads, a variety of options, right? But if you don't have this, Google Classrooms provides a similar sort of uh, situation. And you, um, a Google account is free, right? Um, teachers can build this and invite students to it. I just have one class built in this sample dashboard, but if I click the plus here, I can add more plant, more classes. If I go into the classes, they look, look very similar to my canvas classes and I can have, uh, change my pattern or color if I want to, or whatever you can get as fancy or not fancy as you want, but then you can add assignments that just build down the page and your students log into here and they, access their assignment, do the work, and turn it back in. Now you can also have them work through a Zoom class with you just like this. This is what we do in, um, in the classes I teach for Santa Fe right now. We would be in one of these modules as a class together um, with it Zoomed to you just like you're looking at it. I would be Zooming it to the students and we would open an activity and complete that activity and um, and then move on and then, but then students who missed class or came late could um, still participate and um, finish before the next week when it is due, right? And so it's a place that there's always um, 
a common location to get the information about what's going on in class without having to be in a physical environment. Um, even if you're on campus, I would suggest start using these things, um, uh, either a Google Classroom or a Canvas-based similar learning management system with whatever college you may be at. Um, it's a great way to get your students in the habit of um, they come in, sit down, and log into a computer. Now, I know some of the programs may not have um, desktop or laptop computers for all students that come to their face-to-face -face classes at any given time, but I would argue given uh, the world and the, the stark realization forced upon us about how important online and digital learning is in the face, in the wave of this pandemic that I, uh, I think buying um, some of that uh, technology to use in your programs would be um, grant dollars well spent. So um, I would encourage that. Um, now, uh, another thing to do, I wanted to talk about working in some of these programs. I said that you should, you should teach your students how to use um, Microsoft Word and, micro, and maybe Microsoft Excel, uh, maybe even PowerPoint. And um, if you don't have access to those programs um, or your students don't have those on computers that they have access to, there is word processing that works very similar. It's all, it, it, not all the features are exactly the same as your regular Microsoft Word on your computer, but they're very close through um, Google Documents. And you can create word process documents. You can save them as a Microsoft document when you download them so that you can work through them in Word later, or you can save them in a variety of other formats, obviously. You can um, work on spreadsheets. Oops, that's not what I meant to go to. Oh, over here. Nope. Oh, that was where I meant to go to, whoops. So you can work in Sheets, which essentially makes your Excel spreadsheet. Slides, which essentially you can say is your PowerPoint and can be saved and transferred into PowerPoint. And then um, Forms is fun too. We've actually gotten into using Forms in our program and it built uh, entry forms for our students that we send them and they fill out online as part of our orientation process. It's very easy to use and a great program to teach your students. Um, there's also Google Drive, which can um, be the place that you, sh that you house the material you share back and forth if it's not turned in as a regular assignment to your Google, Google Classroom. And so this is your in the cloud part, right? Another thing that many of the colleges already have their cloud-based system um, built into their university setting probably, but you can create that through Google Drive, okay? So, oh yeah, so here, that's what I just went through a little bit there. The Google Classroom is you know, free LMS essentially. Like I said, it's not as robust as Canvas. There's things you can do in Canvas that you can't do in Google Classroom, but um, it can do a whole lot. And you don't really need to be able to do a whole lot with it to start working with it and being able to teach your um, students to work with it. Uh, Google Documents, like I was saying here, provide a large variety of online programs for free um, with your Google account, including uh, word processing, like a Word and a Excel style spreadsheets. And then the drives, your cloud-based system. Um, and so these all are things that are very similar to the kind of workflow environments that students might be in in an academic situation or a future workplace. Now, the question is, how do we build our own confidence and teach our students how to do this, even though we may not all be the most um, tech savvy um, people in the world, right? Um, in many of our, uh, many folks in adult ed, adult ed wasn't their first career. This is a, a second career. They may not have been teachers in the past, or they may have been teachers who taught most of their career without a lot of technology. And um, this can be somewhat overwhelming. But like I said at the beginning, I encourage you all to be uh, lifelong learners. And I know that you um, can teach your students how to do this, but you can also, teach your students how to learn. And I'm gonna show you here in just a second through this Goodwill Community Foundation and some other material, um, something, a way to work through this, I hope will build your confidence to where you feel that you can share this with your students. And um, as I've say, said here in this little box or bubble, 
your role as an educator is not just to teach information, but also to teach students how to learn. Working through the material with students can offer an excellent opportunity to demonstrate your approach to learning to your students. In other words, how do you learn? Well, they can watch you learn and find out how you learn. And here's a great resource for doing that with a large variety of topics, but the technology material is particularly um, wonderful. So this is through um, the Goodwill Community Foundation. It's called, uh, it's through their learnfree.org uh, project or program. They have, um, this is just their main page. There's a variety of little sub areas you can hop to, or you can hop to all topics. I went ahead and already opened some of these so we wouldn't worry about waiting for the computer to load. But under all topics, you can see there's a large variety of stuff. Computer skills, just basics, like how to turn on the computer and things, how to use a mouse, what the different clicks mean, um, typing tutorial, a little bit about an introduction to computer science, tech savvy tips and tricks. This is a fun one. Like it, it is just what it says. It tells you some of the little things that you might not know if you uh, otherwise or might take a while to figure out. There's some career planning, some job search stuff, um, you know, things that we're, we're teaching anyway, but here's another resource for some of this. Things about email, how do you use email? Specifically, how do you use Gmail? Um, but, but basics as well, right? Um, different internet browsers. So even just how to use an internet browser. Here's how to use Chrome or Firefox or Edge, or here's just internet basics. I've worked through this with students before, and it's an excellent beginning for students that, um, you know, maybe they get on, maybe they get on the computer or on their phone and um, surf things, but they don't know a whole lot about how the internet works really or what's going on with it. Um, oh, hold on one second. I apologize. This wind outside is freaking around. One of the joys and sometimes bothers of working from home, um, right? The, the family dog. Um, anyhow, using the web to get stuff done. Another great tutorial about how to do everything from buy movie tickets on the internet to use Google Maps to um, all those different types of things, like just um, doing stuff on the internet. How to search better, how to make your internet searches better. Um, what were some other really fun ones here at the bottom? I um, have worked through some of these with students that were interested in graphics and, and digital design um, skills, uh, digital media literacy, beginning graphic design, and image editing 101 um, are all a lot of fun. And they talk about the terminology you might hear in a graphic design course. And it can give your students an introduction to a career they might pursue. And it's essentially a reading project. You work through um, the material, reading and um, watching tutorials and then doing little practices, which I'm about to show you an example of. But I just wanted to give you an idea of the wealth of material they have here. Here, they can tell us more about how to use Zoom. Although we seem to be doing quite well right now, I think. But here's all your Google um, lessons. So learn more about how to use the docs, the drive, the uh, sheets, even slides, like we said, that's the um, PowerPoint version, right? Uh, okay, I think that's all I wanted to point out. Oh no, there are also, yeah, some basic um, academic things. You know, if you needed another resource for that or some more GED prep resources, here's some basic reading and math um, resource, uh, resources. Um, oh, these are fun too. The, wearables, work, freelance work, sharing economy, some of these ideas that your students might be interested in. The critical thinking and decision-making program is pretty nice. Um, they're all quite well put together and I don't, I'm not getting any kickback from uh, Goodwill Community Foundation, but I wanna take you inside the Word one because Word was one of the programs I was suggesting you start helping your students learn. And it's Microsoft Word is a basic word processing program. And even programs that are not Microsoft Word now use many of the same functions and icons so that once you've learned one program, you can transfer the skills to others very easily. 
For example, we'll see here in just a second. Um, well, anybody that's seen Word already recognized when I had this open earlier, that this bar, all these tools, looks very similar to the icons used in your standard Word. And the choices, file, edit, view, insert, format, these are all very standard options, right? Well, here in Canvas, if I go to enter, let me see here, for any assignment, mail my book here. If I go, um, oh, there's not a submit because I'm in teacher mode. Oh, it'll still show under edit. Okay, so when the students get it, I can edit the assignment here and the students get, uh, when they submit it, it pops up in a little box that looks the same. But look at this. It looks very similar to stuff that you see on a Word toolbar. Here's our size of the text. Here's the way it sits. Is it a paragraph or what kind of heading? What size the words are, right? Bold, italics, underline. Um, this is going, I think this is, what is this one? Oh, the color, color of highlight, right? Put in a link, put in a picture. Um, where it's aligned, add bold dots or numbers or, you know, different kinds of settings of that nature. So it's, it, it's become to where if, if you learn the Microsoft programs, no matter what else you go to, they'll work very similarly because no one's a big enough competitor with Microsoft to try and force you to learn a new system, right? They're going to go with the standard sort of system to make it user friendly. And so um, when you load into the Word course, uh, you can see there's a series of lessons, and I'll scroll kind of slowly. They start with how to get started, just the different pieces of the thing, um, of the, the user interface, um, how to save stuff to the drive so you don't have to save it onto your desktop, um, creating and opening, saving and sharing, and then it gets into working with things, right? How to do basics with text, use find, replace, and dense line spacing, lists, links, page layout. You can see it goes quite in depth. Columns, footers, headers, page numbers, pictures, bunch of stuff on pictures. Adding tables, charts, spelling and grammar, tracking your changes. This is, this is another handy tool. Once your students learn how to use Word a little bit, and you do as well, you can track the changes that you make or the comments that you put in, and it's a really, um, interactive way for um, you to help edit and increase the, the writing quality of their paragraphs or short essays or long papers if you're having them write longer stuff. But you can see it goes pretty detailed. And at the end, then they try and get you to like uh, basically buy the Office 365. But um, 30 something lessons of all the different pieces of Word. And if you go into any of these, there is a um, little written introduction, tells you the main things that it's gonna teach you in bold. There's a practice document you can download that'll already have, I'll, I'm not gonna download it right now, but I'll show you it at the bottom of the screen here in a second. But it already has some stuff prepped that then you make changes to. And so you don't have to type a new document every time. You just follow the changes that the lesson has given you. You make those. So there's a little tutorial video I'm just started to remind myself, yeah, this one's only four minutes long. So I was going to say they're all about four, five, six minutes long. Some are a little bit shorter, even just a minute or two. But then exactly what's in the video is written out down below. Okay. And you can see how it's, 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 it's nicely um, bolded out for the little pieces that it really wants you to pay attention to um, in the lesson that you're learning. And um, it tells you that like, it gives screenshots. Here's what it should look like. Now do this, here's what it should look like, okay? It kind of takes us through the whole lesson in a written form that they just took us through in um, the video form. And then when we get to the bottom, okay, this is still the lesson. We're learning how to cut and paste and move text and that sort of thing. Drag and drop, undo, redo. Oh, undo is the savior of many a frightened college student who accidentally deleted something. But here we go, then there's the challenge. So this is the practice document that we uh, uh, downloaded at the top. And if we didn't download it there, they have it again here for us to download. And it gives us what to do. It says, all right, download this, scroll to page two, add the insertion point in this place and type this, move around and make these changes, use the drag and drop to do this, add the trademark symbol. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like this, okay? 
Now you can tell by how little they had us do that most of this had to already be on the page, right? So they already give you this document. That's what the downloaded document is. And then you make the changes. And um, it's a great, uh, great way to learn this program or other programs. This is how all these GCF um, tutorials are set up. Another um, suggestion, what I've done with the students quite often is just pause the video every time they show us a new move and everybody in the class tries it. And then go a little further, pause the video and everybody tries it. And then you can do another round of the same thing when you come down and actually do the challenge. And so you'll essentially had two little practices for every lesson that they give you. And when you get to the bottom, you just say continue and it pulls up the next lesson, which in this case is oh, formatting the text in the same setup. You can see a little introduction, a practice document, a video, and at the bottom of this, all that is the copy of the video and at the bottom, a challenge, right? Um, now I would argue as good lifelong learners, you can all do this um, and you can all do this in front of your students and um, not worry about making a mistake, but encouraging them to um, learn how to overcome and learn through mistakes, learn perseverance, learn critical thinking to figure out what the problem is, right? Um, I think one thing they, 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 if they don't, they probably should teach in all the IT stuff is, uh, is meditation or extreme patience. Because from what I can understand, even if you're the best of the best, there's always problems with uh, any sort of um, computer, digital, online world. There's always a problem sometimes, right? but that's part of what we have to learn to overcome. So again, these are excellent resources and I've used many of them to teach face-to-face -face and now um, Zoom-based kind of online-based classes. And um, I would encourage you to uh, do the same. Now getting more specifically, these are all entry-level skills and very um, important uh, digital literacy skills for our um, online world today. But there's also, um, at, at Santa Fe, we've been pushing for quite a while for um, lower level, um, entry level certifications that we can um, help our students receive and they can get them started in the workforce. We have many students in adult education and literacy programs that, um, that, may, that um, may never attain the GED. And if they do, it may be quite a while. And so finding something for them to work on or an uh, industry to be involved in at a lower level of education is uh, essential to helping them be um, successful and find fulfilling and meaningful um, employment. Um, one area that we've found successful for that for many students is um, the CNA program um, uh, because you do not have to have a high school diploma to get a nursing assistant license or certification. Um, but um, you still need pretty darn close to high school equivalency skills to really succeed and do well in the work and in that industry. Um, Childcare is another area that we found, and I've um, spoken to some of y'all, I'm sure, about this in the past. Um, we found it to be a very successful option for some of our um, lower level academic students in terms of um, really learning not only a trade, but kind of how that kind of certification process works too, like how you go about doing trainings like this and how that's different than sometimes traditional um, academic work. And so let me show you a little bit about how this works. I've left some links here for you. What we do is essentially assist our students through, put this a little out of order, through the online training program. So the, the Department of um, Child and Family Services in uh, the state of Florida has, uh, runs the child care training programs. And we assist students with the requirements to work in a facility in what's called the 40 hour training to work in a facility. And this, this document here tells you some of the rules about that situation. Um, on the second page here, they give you Oops, oh, this is the wrong document. No, here it is. These are the ones that, um, these classes are mainly what we teach to help students get the 40 hour training and then help them find a position to start work. So we teach um, 
these classes here, the rules and regs, health, safety, and nutrition, identifying and reporting abuse and neglect, child growth and development, and behavior observation and screening. And then the students can choose another one. Often in our program, students choose special needs appropriate practices to work on. Um, and we end up working through that. Now I should say we work through it instead of we teach it because I do work hand in hand with the students to help them through their online training and to make sure they learn the material. Um, the DCF uh, offers online training and right now it's uh, like 154 days of access to the training once you sign up. For each one of the classes I just mentioned, it's only $10. You, you um, register and then you gain access to a um, program like this. So here's the beginning of the special needs appropriate practices module. It, um, and what you can see is I can read along and learn the information. Okay, this is telling me how to learn these concepts and what to do. Right. But if I get time, oh, time me out. Oh, shoot. Okay. No problem. Oops. Where's the training login? Training login. So, what I was about to show you is um, that it will read to you, it will also. Um, you can also switch it to Spanish very easily. It won't read to you in Spanish, but you can read it in Spanish if you are a Spanish speaker. And um, although I, they can resume, there we go. Although I know many people in um, ESOL would, it will encourage their um, students to only read in English, right, as they're learning English. But um, I've spoken to some of the people in our program and our director at um, Santa Fe, and she concurs that this would be an appropriate time to use the other language to confirm what you think you've learned so that you're getting the proper information for the test, right? So here, if I'm in this module and I want to, I'm reading along, okay, I like this page, I go to the next page. I'm feeling a little, Oh wait, this is an activity. Let's go to another page with lots of reading. Feeling a little tired of reading to myself, but I want to listen to it. Just press right here and it'll start, it'll read out loud to me. It's a really good um, text, to, text to voice uh, reader because it's built for this page. It's not reading it on the fly, right? It's not um, like you can always use um, natural reader, which I actually have loaded on um, my Google Chrome, but this um, with the DCF, they have it built in and it's very nice. Um, you can also, at the bottom of the page, here's where you switch it to Spanish. And all of a sudden the whole screen is Spanish. And so you can read it in um, Espanol. Um, I have some uh, native Spanish speakers who have used that tool to confirm what they're reading, but then um, to their credit, they've challenged themselves to pass their tests in um, English because you can take a childcare test in Spanish. I've also had some students from other um, non-native uh, backgrounds that have uh, different languages and are a little frustrated that it's only English or Spanish here, but, um, but uh, it's, it, nonetheless, uh, it's, a, it's great material for lower level students or um, uh, students that are new to English, right? So let's go back to the menu one second so I can show you one other thing, of course, no, it didn't let me go all the way back. Main menu. Well, there's also, maybe I already pulled it up. Nope. There's also a document you can download that is the, um, oh, there we go, course introduction. They provide you with a, um, get up to it, a PDF you can download and print off that is a workbook. There's also a study guide, but the workbook, so the participants guide, they call it. If you um, download and print this off, it has gaps like uh, blanks in different sentences for material throughout the entire uh, training. And anywhere on the material here, oh, now I've got it going in two places. Anywhere in the text, like when we're learning, if this was text we were learning on, 
if any words in here were in green, they would be the words that go in the blank in the participant's guide. And so it's kind of a way to force students to learn as they're going. Also, at each one of these modules, there's a little quiz and you have to pass uh, the quiz. You have to get at least a 70 or better before you can go on to the next module. Okay, so it kind of encourages you to um, study as you go along. Now, I'm not associated with the, the DCS. And so I uh, guide students while they are um, working through it. They have to sign in, sign up, and work online through this material themselves. And then they have to sit for a test when it's over. So like I said, it's a little bit of an additional cost than our traditional program costs. Like we um, are required to charge $30 a semester at Santa Fe for the adult ed program. But if you participate in the childcare, then you're required to pay for these classes um, on your own as well. They're not part of our overall package because you have to pay the DCS. And so it would be $10 for a class. And then when you're finished, you can take a test to get certified in that class. And the tests are offered a couple of times a month. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your perspective, right now in Alachua County, they aren't giving tests because we're still on a fairly strict um, kind of lockdown. Uh, I don't know if lockdown is quite the right word. We're not still locked down, whatever it is. We're under pretty strict orders still in terms of what businesses are open and what sorts of testings and things are going on. But I've had some students drive to another county nearby and take the tests, and they're practicing social distancing and um, cleaning measures in the testing environments. So the, the upshot is you take each of these things, you get um, cert your 40 hour certification, and then you can go apply for work as at a childcare facility around Gainesville or wherever you're from. And we've had some students um, go to work. Um, we have a few students that work for O to B Kids in Gainesville now which um, again, I'm not supporting them uh, uh, over or against any other childcare, but one thing that has been really nice about that is they do offer benefits, which unfortunately is something many childcare um, facilities don't. So it's been a real success for some of our students. Um, and again, this is something, I do this training. I don't have children. I've never worked in childcare, although I worked at a, a camp for many, many years and I do have uh, younger siblings. But the point is, I embraced my um, inner lifelong learner and learned right alongside with my students and showed them how to use this material and how I would use it to teach myself uh, the material. And we learned together. And now, of course, I've done it um, for a little while. And so I kind of know I'm looking for some of these green words real quick to show you what I meant. They're, 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 they're making a liar out of me. They've got too many of the key points. That's the other important thing in all of these, the key points. Why are there no green words in the special needs? Usually there's all these like, what kind of, you need a high quality natural environment. And high quality would be in green. And that would be what would help you follow along in your book. Um, anyhow, let's leave that for now. So um, just to kind of summarize again, you know, I uh, encourage you all to teach through example to continue to be the lifelong learner that I know that you are because that's why you're a teacher in the first place. Um, there's this little, you know, take this phrase with you, be the facilitator, not the lecturer. And I know we're not exactly lecturers in adult ed or literacy. Um, we're often working side by side with our students to work through a reading passage or accomplish a math problem or something. But I also mean um, by that kind of leading into this second point, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Be like, hey, I'm just helping you figure this out. We're working through this together. I don't know everything there is to know about childcare, but I know everything there is to know about it is on this PowerPoint or on this web page, and we're gonna learn it together so that you can pass the test and go to work doing it. You know, that's that attitude of a, a facilitator or a, or a sister or a helper, right? Instead of the, the, the feeder of knowledge, the helper of knowledge, I guess we could say. So also I found this has kind of uh, been a fun thing too. The few, you know, when I, when I have a, a failure in digital literacy or have a little problem, there's always some student that knows the digital literacy, right? They can figure it out. Don't be overwhelmed by that. Let them help, make them kind of a, an official, uh, official unofficial sort of 
assistant. Um, they'll get um, some confidence boost from helping you. They'll get confidence boost from helping other students. Many students who are in our programs uh, have, have a, a not had that sort of a, a confidence in an academic setting. And, um, and it'll also therefore encourage them to um, refocus and re-energize about the things they don't know yet because they have more confidence just being in the room and being in that academic setting. Um, don't get overwhelmed that they know something you might not because they don't know lots of things that you do know, which is why they're there seeking your assistance, right? So lean on them and help get them to be your little partner in things. Um, also, try new things. You know, if your ideas fail, try something else. Um, we've tried lots of things at Santa Fe under the auspices of a reading or writing class and just the way you turn the material can be um, career exploration, like that um, graphic design um, course from the GCF that I was speaking of earlier. Um, that was back when we were face-to-face, -face, but we were doing it in a computer room and um, people were doing digital design on their computers. And, you know, we were, uh, we were just winging it. And, um, you know, there were students that took to it really well and came up with much more dynamic looking finished products than I did, but we all worked through the material together and we all learned something. And it was really um, quite exciting. So um, like I just, uh, just to reiterate it one more time, like I've written here exactly, students will learn a great deal about learning overcoming failure and critical thinking while watching you learn. In other words, while watching you do all these things, right? So um, no such thing as a non-teachable moment. Every moment's a teachable moment, especially in this digital online world. So um, that's all I've got for you today. And um, I'm um, obviously um, happy to answer some more questions, to answer, well, answer questions. I should have said earlier to feel free to, to, to jump in and interrupt or um, type in things to the question and answer uh, slot at any point. But um, here's some other contact information or my emails, the easiest way to get in touch with me. And I'm happy to set up a phone conversation or Zoom meeting or something with anybody that wants to talk about any of these issues any further. Um, yeah. Hey, Harold, we have a few questions in the chat. If it's all right, I, I can read them out loud. Sure, wonderful. All right, so um, we have a question um, from Randy. Uh, would you be able to share your online orientation? Um, yes, I don't know why not. I, um, yeah, of course. We, um, what we have really is a, um, we have a PowerPoint that we use at Santa Fe that any, we take turns running our online orientation. We run it through a Zoom meeting um, similar to this, although actually not the webinar, the Zoom meetings, so students can use their video and chat back and such, so it try, we try and make it feel a little um, like an open room at the very beginning, and then we all shut our videos and, and mics off for the most part to kill the rumble, but, um, uh, and then we have a, a kind of a, a standard formed um, email that goes out to follow it up that um, contains uh, three links one to uh, the WIOA form that we need, the information we need for the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity and Investment Act, right? I think I got too many eyes in there, but y'all know what I mean. Um, and uh, another form that we need um, for career assessment stuff, it takes them to the career assessment uh, link and uh, through Santa Fe, and then another link to just kind of a get to know them form for our own purposes. Um, primarily put together to try and help us figure out where their skill level is and just to get to know them a little bit. Um, since we're not doing TAVE face-to-face -face in adult ed at the moment, we um, needed a way to try and gauge some, some skills um, online um, as they're enrolling. But I'm happy to share that material for sure. Absolutely. Okay, um, the next question here is uh, from Susan. Um, so are you, as the instructor, logging into the course material and teaching and reviewing the material with the class over Zoom? Yes. Yes, I am. For like DCF, I end up, um, for that, for an example, I end up paying for a class myself, like I've done several of them now, and, um, and I do it that way. I also, right now for our Canvas courses and like classes we're teaching for general adult ed, 
yeah, I log into Zoom and we all work together through this material. Um, if you if you get into true um, like educational technology theory about the best way to do those things, um, they, they'll tell you not to do classes where everyone tries to zoom in at the same time. Um, it's been working fairly well. It's something we've been doing at Santa Fe um, since the shutdown um, to try and keep some connection to students. I don't know if adult ed students necessarily have the um, organizational skills yet and study skills yet to really work on a class where they don't meet in a Zoom room with the teacher to work through at least part of the material and then have some homework. So yes, is the short answer. Just out of curiosity, how long are the sessions maybe? Is that what Seth says? Um, an hour and a half. I usually don't go over an hour and a half. That gets to be, um, we used to have three hour blocks in person at Santa Fe and we'd take a break in the middle. Um, online, um, longer than an hour and a half uh, is too much. And it's very unrealistic to expect people to log off, take a break and log back in five or 10 minutes. Weeks, months, et cetera. Oh, adult ed um, at Santa Fe, we run like the, the school year, like, a, like a, the college school year. So we run three semesters a year. Um, we're in the middle of our fall semester right now, which is essentially 15 weeks. Most of the classes I'm teaching right now are just meeting once a week for that hour and a half, and then they do um, some out, out of class work. Um, but I do have one class that meets twice a week. Um, some of our other teachers are teaching twice a week. It's kind of a, we're trying different things um, as I'm sure many of y'all are. And so it's kind of a little bit of teacher preference as to how they want to do it or try, try that. We have another question from Susan here. Um, as the instructor in childcare, did you have to take or pass a test first? Does the instructor need to be certified or credentialed? No, so that's the thing. And I was in a class, uh, a session a little while back where I was giving this presentation and there was someone there from DCF and they asked me some questions about what I was doing. And they, they ultimately approved. I'm not officially with DCF in any way. So they haven't said I'm teaching. They don't know I'm teaching. They don't, um, uh, I'm not certified to teach. All I'm doing is acting like I'm assisting my students getting ready for this, just like I would assist them reading and understanding any book they would want to. Um, for example, at Santa Fe, we have a, um, a robust technical school, right? And um, uh, I have had plumbing students who had um, difficulty, like didn't have the highest um, level reading skills, but they were in the plumbing program. They came to me we worked through the plumbing book and I essentially taught plumbing. I mean, I didn't, he, they, the, the people still went to the plumbing class, but we worked on reading and understanding plumbing. And I helped them understand what the book was saying about plumbing, even though I didn't know much about plumbing. I'm essentially doing the same thing with the DCF material here. And the students all have to register and, and work through it on their own. When they, when they go, this we do as a class together, and then they have to go on their own time, work through this material and go through every page of every material on their own, right? And pass all the little quizzes on their own at each level. Like I said, there's one for each of these. And then they have to go pass the test on their own, right? So um, I'm just um, a tutor essentially, but um, I'm, I'm a little bit more of an aggressive tutor in that we do hold a class where we all work through the material as a group together and make sure that everyone understands. And then they go back and work through it alone. Or in some cases they get ahead and they've already worked through it once and then we work through it as a group. So they're getting multiple, um, multiple uh, times with the material. There, I, I just saw something, how do you market the courses or these classes? Um, we market them as part of our orientation um, for, adult ed, for adult students entering our program. Um, we have um, we have strictly academic classes that, that fill your, your basic tape, reading language, math skills. Then we have a little more advanced that fill more um, the reasoning and language arts and, um, and uh, social studies, science, math for like GED level. And then we also offer workforce um, workforce preparation courses. And many years ago, Santa Fe was fortunate enough to get uh, our program, the adult ed program there received the Walmart Brighter Futures Grant, which helped us actually pay for some students to enter um, entry level 
certification programs that would lead to what they called middle income jobs. And um, we kind of ignored some of the middle income job part because we had too many students that were too low level to, we just needed them to get a job, right? Um, even the CNA program doesn't count as middle, um, as middle income or whatever. You have to get a little further up in the nursing world. And we, did, we just didn't have that high enough, qual high enough academic skill students. So we pushed for lower level programs and we helped pay for some childcare programs and some CNA programs. And then um, shortly thereafter, the FICAPS grants came through Florida, which was pushing the same sort of integrated learning that the Walmart Brighter Future Project pushed. And so we just continued with that, um, that plan. And so workforce related classes have kind of been part of our program since then. We have the we have a CNA class where we go through the CNA book that is used in the actual training um, at Santa Fe and work through medical terminology with the students. And it's just a reading class on our schedule, but the students know it's nursing reading or CNA prep is what they call it. And the teacher actually helps them go through some of the requirements in terms of passing the test to get into the CNA program and things like that as well. But again, it's that um, super tutor sort of environment. Um, we also have an agriculture and um, horticultural program um, do the students sometimes have questions about what, Greg? I missed the nice last bit of that. It's on my weird little screen. Could you bring that up, Nicole? What was Greg asking? Yeah. yeah. Do students sometimes have questions on the content, such as child care, that you are unable to answer? If so, how do you deal with those situations? Um, no, very rarely, um, because it's all here. The material is very well put together. But if they do, I just am honest. Like, I don't know the answer to this now. Let's look it up together. Um, I often supplement this material. And, we, and that's another thing about learning critical thinking and digital literacy is where do we go for quality material to supplement what we're learning about? Like um, when we're learning about um, health and nutrition and um, such in the DCF material here with childcare, we go to the CDC or we go to... Um, the government one plate system, right? And um, many of those links are already embedded here within the, um, the material. But then um, as you've gone through it a few times, there's other places, um, you know, you kind of learn that those are the, the places to trust and what to lean on. Also um, for the nursing stuff in those, that world, if you get into talking more careers, um, the Florida Literacy Council has some excellent information, great little booklet you should look into. Um, or coalition, Florida Literacy Coalition. Greg can get you a copy, I'm sure. Um, but no, I don't. I, I also, I, I, um, I guess that's part of my message today is gain the confidence to say I don't know to your students, right? We were all learners at one time who didn't know anything, and uh, as lifelong learners, you're always excited to learn new things. So, um, so are these classes that you could start right now? You can start them anytime if that's the question. Um, they're um, yeah, anytime you want to start them. Was that what that was, Nicole? Um, it's a little bit longer. Um, oh. I have the full the full uh, screen here. So are these classes that you could study for as an individual? Oh, um, yeah. Uh, and are you just providing literacy support? At, basically, yes. But I'm also providing study skill support and in some cases English understanding support because we have a pretty large ESOL program at Santa Fe and we've opened like the childcare course to them, for example. Um, so yeah, and that's the way you can, you can roll this into something you're doing. You can teach reading and teach literacy through this. Let's pick out the main idea of this passage. It just so happens that we're learning a main idea about something that's gonna help you pass a test and get a job someday, right? Instead of just reading a passage in a reading um, book, right? That, that has, um, there's nothing wrong with using that type of material as well, right? This is just another layer and a way to kind of do multiple things at once. Michelle also asked another question earlier, other than a CNA or childcare, are there other types of certifications that are available? Um, yes, well, um, not, not certifications through our programs right now. Um, we're trying to push for lower level certifications always. Um, there's, it's a hard spot to fill. Um, but we do work closely with, um, like I said, the vocational programs at Santa Fe. And so we often have students that are working on those certifications, um, like plumbing. So more of your technical, your plumbing, your electrical, 
your um, carpentry, although we don't offer them specifically. For a short period there, we did offer an introductory thing to that, um, uh, introductory to kind of um, construction because I have some construction background and we kind of folded that into a, a, a basic math class and it, it worked really well. Um, but we do offer without a certificate, um, an agricultural horticultural program that has a, a one day in the classroom or online working with academic material and literacy and reading and such. And another day actually in the field um, at the Grow Hub here in Gainesville working with plants. Um, we have a, a artist entrepreneurship program going that um, is not an art class, but it helps people learn how to market their art. And it's a, a lot of digital literacy really, because a lot of marketing art is marketing art online. Um, we also teach uh, CPR and first aid, which aren't exactly um, entry level certificates, but there's certainly great um, extra certifications to have to give people one up on their resume for people that do not have um, anything on a resume as many of our students don't. And they're also confidence builders to actually finish and, and get something. And they're a requirement ultimately to get employed in childcare and um, nursing work. Um, and we also um, teach, and actually this is more of a, a true inter entry level certificate. Um, we teach and certify people in the um, food handling certification, the um, entry level food handler for working in a restaurant and such. And um, our, our department director, our program director, Julie Fault teaches that. And she did get certified to teach that. Um, and it cost just a couple of hundred dollars and she got certified to teach that and then teaches that to students. And uh, in a same sort of um, setting with a, a primarily a reading and literacy um, class working through and understanding the material and learning reading skills while pulling out this uh, important material for their potential career. We have a, another question from Susan here. Have you tutored um, slash studied in unison uh, cosmetology slash hairdresser material? We have not, but that's an excellent question. We also have, we do have people um, often ask about that. And um, it's not something that we've, that we've worked in, um, but uh, an excellent suggestion. There are a few um, cosmetology schools here in, in Gainesville and um, I've tried to help students with the funding process for them before, um, but I've never, we've never taught kind of a prep uh, a class in that, but something we may look into, good thought. A few more questions. Uh, do you have the food handling certification link? Um, it was ours, we, no, I don't have it handy. It was done through IFAS, through the IF, through um, IFAS, through the University of Florida. Um, I can get it to you. I can, um, I could look it up. I don't know if I can look it up right now. Let me see if I can. I'll look it up real quickly while we think about what any other questions. Um, and you can also send it to me and I can um, pass it along to people after the session. We okay. do have another uh, question here. Which certificate do you feel has the most appeal while also not being too difficult to achieve for most students? Um, uh, now I'm getting sidetracked. This might not. This is it. I'll have to look for this later and send it to you. So the most appeal without being too difficult. Um, I think uh, I, I might, I don't know. I might have said something different a little while back, but I think that might, um, that might be the, the child care at this point. Or yeah, in terms of an actual certificate, probably the, the child care at this point. Um, we had a lot of people interested in the nursing for a while. I think that may have dropped off due to um, uh, maybe fear of the, the pandemic. Um, but uh, one thing that's interesting about childcare, and I'm not sure if this will change, uh, it would be nice if what, how we value and pay childcare workers changed a little bit because they are a pretty low level, I mean, it's most of them start at minimum wage, but um, it's been, we've seen during this pandemic that they're, they're in need, they're an essential worker. We can't have healthcare workers going to work without somewhere to leave their children. And so um, at the same time, um, it's not super difficult to get certified in, but it is a little more difficult than I had originally hoped for in that there are some things that you need to know or learn to pass the test that you don't necessarily need to work in childcare services. And some of our lowest literacy students still had trouble passing the test. Some of the students I really was hoping this certification would be for did still have trouble. 
For example, in growth and development, you have to learn about Piaget and Montessori and Vakowski and um, you know Maslow's hierarchy and um, Eric Erickson's eight conflicts and you know um, that can be difficult for someone uh, to keep all those straight and answer questions about them who's still struggling with reading. Um, but they don't really need to know that to actually work in a childcare. Maybe the director does, in my opinion. You know, um, it's part of the over certification of everything. Um, but this is still a very popular route, a very popular option. Um, yeah. All right, um, we have another question here. Do you use Ready to uh, Florida Ready to Work? Um, no, right now, or not right now, we don't. And okay. we're using, yeah, sorry, that's the simple answer. No real reason. Okay, and I believe that's all the questions we have. Great. Well, um, well, thanks again um, for every everyone for um, for participating, and thanks again to the Florida uh, Literacy Coalition for having me. And if there's any um, further questions that you want to send to Nicole or or um, me, you you have my uh, contact here now that you have the PowerPoint. But just to you know reiterate, it's just Harold.Gertner at sfcollege.edu, and. Um, I'd be happy to, to answer any more questions or, or research any of these things that I didn't quite have the, the perfect answer to for you today. Um, but yeah, thanks again for participating. And um, thanks again, everybody, for having me. Oh, Teresa Sterling's here. Thanks, Teresa. All right. And thank you so much, uh, Harold. Um, I do want to go over a few housekeeping items. I shared in the chat the um, health careers guide that, that Harold had referenced earlier. Um, that has some entry level um, health career certifications. Um, so you might want to take a look at that. Um, I also just shared the PowerPoint again in the chat if you didn't see it earlier in the chat. Uh, so you can click that and get that as well. I will be sending you all a follow up email um, after the presentation um, with a link to fill out the survey and a link to get a, a certificate of completion for this. Uh, for this session as well. So um, thank you again, Harold. Thank you so much. Um, and everyone have a wonderful Thursday and uh, we'll see you back on the next webinar. All right, great. Yeah, thanks again for having me. Oops, I was gonna wave goodbye. <laughs> Y'all have a great day. <laughs>